I call the member Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, rise to speak um, for New Zealand First opposing uh, this. Uh, these amendments to the Gambling Amendments Bill No. 3. Um, Sir, we are not here to promote gambling or saying that we are advocates for gambling, but sir, it's important to know that we are looking for a common-sense, pragmatic approach to the gambling throughout this country. And it's interesting to see some of the comments uh, coming out today with regards to gambling and harm minimisation that keeps being uh, brought up. It's interesting to know that nobody's actually talking about specifically those statistics, sir, when it's less than 0.03 as a percentage of the people that are gambling that make up those problem gamblers. The very interesting part that I find uh, difficult to swallow is that we don't have a mechanism to find out what sort of harm minimisation we are needing to implement because we don't know what sort of people have got problems with certain aspects of gambling, i.e. we have got 14 per cent of the country racing, uh, spending money on racing with regards to the gambling. We've got New Zealand Lotteries Commission spending a turnover of $947 million in the Lotteries Commission. We've got the gaming machine income at around the $800 million mark and casinos, which only make up 26% of the total machines, uh, at $520 million. So we don't have a mechanism where we can actually identify what specifically people have got difficulties with their gambling problems directly or indirectly. We've had a proud history for many, many years of being a society that's been heroing or allowing people to um, gamble, whether it be a friendly game of poker or back in World War I playing two up in the trenches with their diggers and mates. I'm concerned with the devils that are in the details of this bill, sir, and when I read it, it doesn't sound particularly harmful until I actually delve into the, uh, the, the bill in its entirety. This legislation, I think, is at least, or at best, quite vague, and it's going to enable our uh, Department of Internal Affairs um, audit people to actually get a big stick to beat this industry over the head with, an industry that's already under uh, amounts of, uh, large amounts of pressure um, with the amount of legislation that is actually there against them. I also think that this industry does far more good than what it does harm, and it needs a little bit more of a common sense approach with regards to the legislation that it brings. Currently, the um, gaming amendment bill, the gaming amendment, I should say, uh, in general in uh, class four gaming, brings in around uh, $300 million into our communities from Invercargill right through to Kai Tire. Those people that have got somehow involved with sports clubs, community groups, churches, schools, arts and culture, heritage groups have all had the pleasure of actually facilitating the money that comes out of Class 4 Gaming to actually build their, on their community. That's right. The difficulty that we're going to have, sir, is if we tighten this up even more, we're going to see vast droppings in numbers of machines and, and turnovers that are going to be coming down. <coughs> Thank you. The droppings, uh, those droppings will have a, a negative impact specifically on those people that are looking for help and support in the community. There's a, a, they will be much like elephant droppings, big droppings. The, the issue that I've got is we've got now the, uh, the councils that are making a, a lot of inroads to making decisions on sinking lid policies with regards to gaming, sir. Um, and they won't realise the negative impact that this is going to have for our communities throughout the country because those communities rely heavily on that support, specifically from Class 4 gaming. In comparison, the uh, Sky Casino only put in $3 million back into the community with their grants, and I'm still struggling to find specifically where that money went to, sir, as opposed to the near $300 million that Class 4 gaming has brought in. Some of the issues that I've got concerns with uh, in relation to this Class 4 gaming, um, in fact, if I read through some of it, it says here, the purpose and overview of the bill states, the Gambling Amendment Bill No. 3 makes a small number of important improvements which I would suggest would have a large negative impact on Class 4 gaming societies and venues and the recipients of those grants. The bill's policy objectives are to make five basic changes, which is increase transparency of grant making from the proceeds of Class 4 gaming, reduce potential conflicts of interest situations between Class 4 gambling operators, societies, venues and grant recipients, 
improve transparency surrounding management companies that provide societies with services, for example, contract negotiations with venues, administrative and financial management, or grant application processing. Number four is to simplify compliance and reduce costs of societies and venue owners in some areas. And finally, to ensure the efficiency of the appeals process is not undermined. To talk to a couple of those positions, sir, we've got under section four, a gaming society key person cannot be a key person in relation to a class four venue license held or applied for. They cannot be both a, a society key person, a trustee, a director, an officer, a chief executive, or a person who ex exercises significant influences in management of a gaming society which is under, uh, under proposal bill number three changes, extends to management service providers. Also under proposed bill number three changes, extends to a person who has the ability directly or indirectly to exert a significant degree of influence over the management or operation of the venue operator, or who may reasonably be perceived to have that ability, could extend to relatives, sir. The concern relates to section 4B, IVB, which states this is the kind of subjectivity I'm speaking about specifically, which really, in my view, sir, is going to give that stick to the um, DIA to be able to go and hit them, th those people over the heads. I think some of the changes we need to make with regards to section 110 is to rename that section, sir, and call it the Sixth Degree of Separation Amendment Bill. Because what it does is it actually covers off just about every person likely to apply for any grant throughout uh, this country. It states that no proceeds, committee members, direct or indirect, interest in any successful applicant of a grant recipient interest is defined as derive a financial benefit or have a financial interest in the recipient, a relative of the recipient, a member or other of the recipient where the recipient is a club or relative of a member or an officer of the recipient, or has been the recipient's lawyer or another professional capacity, is or has been employed by, indebted to, which I underline indebted to, involved in the business or financial dealing of the recipient, is, is otherwise connected or involved with the recipient in a way that can reasonably be perceived as having influence in the decision to make grant to the recipient. This I call, sir, the re, uh, to rename it the sixth degree of separation because this just about covers off everybody in the country. Everybody knows somebody, it could be your second cousin twice removed, that has connected in some way by either family, whether it be a sporting connection. And, sir, I don't think that should be uh, allowed to be put in there. The gambling industry, specifically class four gaming, I've had a lot of uh, involvement with, specifically with my, my business and hospitality. We are a large employer of, of people in the business, and despite what people think, we Too are. Much. Thank you. Despite what people think, we are not making the money out of those gaming machines that people think. In fact, I get a site rental of about $100 per machine. We all know the stories and have seen it in the newspaper, the headlines that made specifically in the early 2000s, where there were episodes <coughs> of people taking full advantage and, uh, and, 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 and taking money and pocketing it for their best, uh, best use and benefit. However, this practice has largely decreased, <coughs> along with the decreasing of the number of machines that are throughout our country at the moment. We've come from, in 2003, 27,000 odd machines, now in July of this year, down to 16,800. That's a 30% drop in gaming machines, which is obviously a drop in revenue, which is a drop in what we can afford to put into our community, sir. And I think this bill, we're, we're opposing it, needs to be very, very seriously thought out and in the committee stage needs to be looking at the devils in the detail because there are so many. I believe this will be the nail in the coffin for an industry that's already under siege. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, sir.